Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with New York City jazz pianist, organist, and composer Roberta Pickett. She talked about this new 2021 COVID world we're living through. We caught up with her on December the 20th as the new variant is taking hold again. Things are closing down around the world, and the last time we spoke was in June of 2020 as the pandemic was initially ramping up and tossing the world of jazz into uncertainty. We covered a new album coming out, what she has learned, the future, and so much more. Enjoy. So the last time we spoke, we were knee-deep into this pandemic, which we keep thinking for some weird reason we're getting out of, and then we get back <laughs> into it. So. <laughs> it's like it's like the worst psychological experiment like the worst baby albert experiment ever being tested yeah on. yeah it's like um, a mass trauma event oh my god so how are you doing how is everything going with you musically you got projects things that are kind of on the horizon well you know like i, I think i might have said this last time you know i'm fortunate to live with a great drummer so even if i'm just home uh at least i'm not too isolated I, you know i have somebody to play music with uh but yeah you know here in the new york area i mean a lot more people are vaccinated in, in the new york and new jersey area than in some other parts of the country while there are fears about omicron and all that you know in new york in manhattan you, you, in the city you have to be vaccinated in order to pretty much go into any restaurant or club. So, you know, a lot of people are still wearing masks. Uh, sometimes I'll wear a mask. I'll take the mask off while I'm playing, but then when I'm, you know, closer to the crowd, interacting with people, then I might put the mask back on. You know, life kind of goes on, you know, and there's definitely a lot of caution. And I do feel like there, there, there's, there are fewer gigs. Like definitely some things have been canceled. You know, I, I just heard somebody was just telling me Radio City Music Hall canceled a Christmas show and, no, so there, there is a lot because somebody got sick. Apparently, it's not as bad as it was a, a year ago. That's that's for sure. Do you have any recordings that you're looking forward to getting groomed to put out there, maybe for next spring when things start opening up? Yeah, actually, um, just did a collaborative recording with my husband Billy Mintz and great bass player Harvey S. We, we recorded it in my in my house, in our house, in my my house and Billy's house, and we're just finishing up the mixing on that, and it's it's um. All original compositions, uh, three by me, three by Billy, and three by Harvey. So I'm hoping that will come out sometime in the spring. So that's that's kind of a nice thing to have happening. You know, as we've gone through this lockdown pandemic time here, and there's been a lot of self-reflection, what, it, what have you learned about yourself that maybe you didn't realize before that's going to make you stronger as we do reemerge more and have more shows and things opening up in the world? I learned that uh, I, I like to keep busy, <laughs> no matter what's going on. I learned that, uh, you know, there's always something you can be working on, you know, with music, uh, whether you're out in the world or not. Um, I've learned that I don't really like playing music with people over the Internet. Uh, it's, a, it's a communal experience. It's a live experience for me. I like performing in front of an audience. I like that communication with the audience. You know, and but I've also learned that, uh, you know, in other ways, I'm sort of a homebody. You know, like, I, I don't really mind being home a lot. I mean, it starts to go stir crazy after a while. But, um, you know, if, 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 I'm, if I'm not gigging, I'm, I'm okay with being home. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't really, I don't know if I've really learned. I don't, I don't really know if any really good has come out of this for me. You know, I, I, I mean, um, I'm just grateful that we've survived this. You know, it's, it's been um, a very hard time. Uh, I don't know if any, I could say really that anything really good has come out of it, but I, I would also say I, I'm grateful that it wasn't worse than it could have been for, for us personally. I know it's been really bad for a lot of people. You know, we've had our trials and tribulations. My mother caught COVID and passed away, but she was she had just turned 95, so it's um, not the same as losing a younger person, of course. Um, but I know a lot of people have had it a lot worse, you, you know, so... Uh, I, I really feel for, for those people. I'm going to think more about that than I am about myself, I would say. What are you noticing about the crowds that are actually getting out now after this long absence from live music? What's your feeling on how the crowd feels now versus the way they did pre-pandemic? Oh, I don't know. I think people are just, um, yeah, they're grateful, you know, to be hearing live music again. I think they're happy to be out. They want to share that with you. They want to talk to you. They, they are just just grateful to uh, 
be able to hear live music again. So a lot of people really miss that. The, the one thing about this is, you know, hopefully things, this variant goes away and wintertime kind of fades away. You know, New York's kind of in the same kind of cycle, so to speak, as, say, a Kansas City kind of uh, environment. When the spring and next year kind of opens up a little bit, how do you see your itinerary opening up? How do you see this kind of unfolding in a hopeful sense? Well, several gigs that were canceled during COVID still haven't been rescheduled. And then I actually had a few gigs that were scheduled for uh, the last few months that got canceled because some venues were still a little bit concerned about uh, having having concerts, uh, you know, so... Um, I'm, I'm hoping that some of that stuff, there were some nice shows also, and I'm hoping some of that will be rescheduled. You know, some things I was really looking forward to with some musicians, even some musicians that I haven't played with before. So I'm hoping that some more things will open up. But honestly, I don't, I don't really know what's going to happen. I mean, it just seems like there's one variant after another, and until people get vaccinated and enough people in the country and the world are vaccinated, there just are going to be new variants popping up. It seems like mass vaccination is the only thing that's going to stop that, uh, and that we don't seem to be going in that direction, unfortunately. Yeah, and, and I don't understand, you know, like, I, I'm, I'm very relieved when I hear about people in New York and California that have high vaccination rates. But in a place like Kansas City, where we're really literally next to a bunch of people that believe that they're, that they're, they're not going to get it, they believe it's all made up, they believe the whole thing's crazy, but all of their relatives are dying. I don't understand. I, th this has been the weirdest dream I think we've all stepped into at this point because there's nothing about this that makes any sense from any standpoint. And I think that's the thing about it. I don't know what it's going to take. I do know, on a personal note, that there's some people that we know that actually had, you know, a real scare COVID-wise, and they're going to get vaccinated. And I don't know what it's going to take, if it's going to take that, but... Yeah, I mean, I think that's the irony of all of this. In the beginning, all the people that were tired and thought that they didn't want to deal with this got on everybody about wearing masks, and now they have the chance to get vaccinated, but they won't. I, I, it's not really making any sense to me. And I think you see that more in places like the Midwest than you would in a place like, you know, New yeah, York. Or... I, I do know, I knew a couple of people in the New York area, you know, in, in the city and New Jersey who refused to get vaccinated. And I think for some people, it's, it's sort of a, a distrust of authority or government, which I can understand that historically, but I think, that, you know, I don't agree with it in the case. I think it's pretty clear uh, that the science is, 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 is legitimate. Um, and then I know someone else who, uh, you know, has kind of gone down the rabbit hole of, um, uh, you know, social media posts that are telling people that, you know, this is all a big scam, like you said, and uh, those people are very it's very difficult to convince. Like, how do you convince somebody that something is not, is not a scam, you know? <laughs> it's yeah. really hard. It's very, it's very hard, you know, that, that how do you convince people that whatever risk you may think the virus poses, the, 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 the vaccine poses, the risk from the virus is, you know, a thousand times worse. I mean, how do you convince people of that? So, um, yeah, I think statistically more people in our area are vaccinated, but that's not to say that there aren't some people who still, in, in, you know, in the Northeast um, that uh, are uh, refused, you know, refusing vaccination and, and, and have these, these ideas. You know, as the world of jazz kind of opens up and, you know, there are some live shows, there are things that are starting to kind of take place that, that, that are showing signs of life. How do you see the world of jazz emerging stronger out of this? Or do you think that this world of jazz is going to emerge stronger after all the things that have happened since March of 2020. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if anything's going to be stronger or weaker. I mean, <laughs> I mean, some clubs have closed, some, some venues have closed. It's hard to tell how much, how much is due to just the declining popularity of jazz and, and how much is due to the pandemic. Um, not to sound negative, but, uh, you know, it's, um, there are a lot of small venues that are trying to support the music, and that's great. I, I, you know, I don't really play, like, the big superstar club, so I, I don't know if I'm the right person to ask that question, you know. I guess it's I'm more about being in New York and, and, and it, all the years that you've seen jazz evolve. I guess that's the bigger question. 
I just see that there are fewer venues and most musicians are struggling, you know, it's, it's harder and harder. There's a handful, it's, it's kind of like the whole, you know, 1% thing. There's like, it's the same thing in, in jazz, you know, there's like a 1% that have 90% of the gigs and the other 99% of the musicians get the other 10% of the gigs. Uh, and it's, um, and they're, and they're in some, it, you know, it's not always based just on merit. Some of it is just for whatever reason, that's how it is. Uh, it's tough out there. You know? Yeah, it is. And hopefully things open up. I know that on my end, as we spoke some time ago during this pandemic, there's been a lot of interviews. It seems like things have been increasingly opening up and there's been some spokes of light. So hopefully that continues. And um, I'm glad I got a chance to catch back up with you. Good luck with future projects as they come out and returning to the stage. And I hope everything is well for the holidays for you. So again, thank you. Well, thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players and singers in New York City, Kansas City, and spots all over the globe giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to Roberta for her time, music, and stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.